Our gracious Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you for the privilege of worshiping on this holy Sabbath day that you set aside not only for physical rest, but mental and spiritual rest as well. We pray that you anoint the lips of uh, Brother Don Gladden as he breaks the bread of life to us. We pray that you will open our hearts and our minds to thy word. Help us to, be, again, be faithful, faithful to the very end is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 6, if you have your Bibles. We'll be reading some passages there, and our sermon is based in that chapter, although we will look at other parts of the Scripture also. Title of our talk, Give Them Something to Eat. The last few weeks have been really hectic. Jesus has sent out the 12 disciples. You'll find it there in Mark chapter 6, um, beginning there in verse um, 6 and onward. He'd sent them out two by two on their own for the very first time. It had been kind of a challenging task that he'd given them because he said, when you go, don't take any money, don't take any extra clothes, don't take your bag, don't take any food. Um, Wear your sandals, but don't take an extra coat. And when you enter a house, then pronounce its blessing and let the people take care of you there. And so they'd gone out and they had preached. The Bible says, um, verse 12, that they went out and preached that people should repent. And they drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Oh, there have been lots of victories. People are getting their lives absolutely changed Demon-possessed people now in their right minds, people who had been ill, able to get around. But there had also been disappointments. There had been rejection by some people. Rejection and people hadn't want to hear the message. There was criticism and fault-finding. And they had made mistakes. There had been times when they hadn't known how to handle situations. And so now they'd come back to Jesus We're told in Desire of Ages that they laid before Jesus their favorable and unfavorable experiences. You know, we always like to tell people about things that went well. We don't usually like to say, I did this and it really turned out badly. But um, they came and told Jesus what had gone well and what hadn't gone well. It says their joy at seeing the results from their labors and their sorrow at their failures and their faults and their weaknesses. From this, I think we can learn it's okay to not be perfect when you're working for God. You go out and just do what he asks you to do. Do your very best, and you're going to make mistakes, and you're going to stumble and fall, and you're going to say stupid things sometimes and all that. But through it all, God works, and his, his cause grows. And we learn by experience how to work with people. You might make mistakes, but don't stop trying. You know, those times, the last couple of weeks, hadn't been easy for Jesus. The Jewish leaders were filled with hatred for him. They were doing everything that they could to destroy his ministry. They would openly criticize him. Every time he said something, they would turn around and try to twist his words. They would ask questions meant to trap him. They looked for any excuse that they could find to turn the people against him. We're told that the priests and rabbis were watching, they were trying to find something that he would do that would allow them to to kill him, to give him the death penalty. So they were always trying to get him to to say something against either the church or against the Romans or something that, that they could use. It says, on every hand, plots for his ruin were multiplying. At this very same time, Mark tells us in verse 14, that John the Baptist is beheaded all because of a rash promise made in a drunken stupor at a birthday party. John had been put into prison. It looked like Jesus didn't care. And John himself had even sent to to Jesus and asked um, there, and we find it in Matthew 11, are you the one that was to come? Are you the Messiah? Or should we expect someone else? Even John was starting to wonder if, if this was, um, was true, Jesus says, just look, 
see what's happening. Look at the people that are healed. Look at the wives that are changed. And they've gone back to, to John. And Jesus has said, there's no greater prophet ever than John the Baptist. And so people expected, well, if there's no greater prophet than John the Baptist, surely Jesus would deliver him. But Jesus hadn't delivered him, and he had had his head cut off. And he was beheaded, and John's disciples had come and buried his headless body. And John's disciples had come to Jesus for reassurance. And Jesus' disciples themselves must have wondered what it meant for them. Maybe would Jesus leave them in their time of need? And Jesus knew that they all needed some time of spiritual and physical refreshment. His disciples from their ministry, both um, successful and challenging, the John the Baptist situation, and Jesus under constant stress. And so the Bible records there in John or on Mark 6, verse 30, the apostles gathered around Jesus, and they reported to him all that they had done and taught. And then because so many people were coming and going that they didn't even have a chance to eat. You talk about ministry without end, not even a chance to eat. Jesus said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Well, there's a time when you're just burned out and you're just tired of working and you're tired of doing everything and you just say, boy, wouldn't it be good to get away and just go camping for a while and just let, you know, no radio, no TV, no internet and just sit by the campfire and listen to the creek flow by or something. And, and that's what Jesus' disciples had in mind. That's what Jesus actually had desired. He says, come on with me by yourselves. Let's, let's get a quiet place and let's talk about things and let's get refreshed for our ministry. Slow down. Enjoy the beauties of nature. You know, it reminds me of David in the fields with his sheep. Um, Moses among the mountains in the quietness. Elijah out in the wilderness um, with God. A time to receive instruction and encouragement. A time for rebuilding. And they decided to go to Bethsaida. Luke tells us that, that the, the specific place. Bethsaida was a town on the north end of the Sea of Galilee. So way up in the north. Um, it was away from the, the cities, from Capernaum and that kind of thing, down on the south end of the Galilee. And it was a remote place. It was springtime, the Bible tells us, when this story took place. And so it was beautiful with the fresh green of spring. The grass was um, all green and, and the trees were all getting their leaves. And they planned to have a relaxing, quiet time together. Learning, unwinding from the stress, just enjoying each other's company I'm learning more about Jesus, but it was not to be. For verse 32 says, So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. Got in a boat, rowed across. Of course, there was no outboard motors to get them there fast. So they're sailing or rowing their way across to the Sea of Galilee up to the north end. But verse 33 tells the plan that they had for their ideas gone awry. But many who saw them leaving recognized them, and they ran on foot from all of the towns, and they got there ahead of them. And when Jesus got to Bethsaida, up there at the north end of the Sea of Galilee, there were already crowds of people there, already waiting for him. So they're watching. As they're running along this, the shore of the Lake of Galilee, they're watching the boat going, where is he going to land? And, and when he lands, they're already there. Jesus could have told them, Man, I need some time alone. Just leave me alone. Um, go away. But verse 34 says, When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And it's good to know that Jesus, regardless of how busy he is, no matter how tired he is, which he was tired as a human. He isn't tired as a god. Today in heaven, he never gets tired, right? He never slumbers, never sleeps. But there he was tired. But he was never too tired to minister to people who were in need. And the Bible says when they came, he had compassion on them. And he began teaching them many things. That's what Mark says. He began teaching them. But Matthew and Luke and John, all three of them said that he wasn't just teaching. He was healing their sick. So people he was healing, touching people. Luke goes on to say not only did he have compassion on them, Luke uses the terms, he welcomed them. So Jesus says, come on, it's okay. I, I know I was trying to get away from all the crowds, but you're here, come on, let's, let's um, 
be together. And he healed all of those, Luke said, who needed healing. John tells us that it was almost Passover time. Um, so we know what time of spring it was. Um, today we call it Easter, right? So we have Easter um, weekend. This was almost Passover time, and the pilgrims were flocking from all over the, the world there, coming down through um, northern Galilee down toward Jerusalem. And so pilgrims were flocking to Jerusalem, and the crowds kept growing throughout the day until by the end of the day, the Bible tells us there were 5,000 plus men, plus that wasn't counting women and children. So if you said probably there were at least as many women, right? if you look at any church gathering, you'll find as many women as you do men in church. So they had to have at least 5,000 women. And back in those days, they had three, four, five, ten kids, whatever. So I imagine there's at least, if you had two kids for each person, we had 20,000 people there kind of thing. So 15, 20, 25,000 people um, are in this crowd. The Bible tells about one special young boy. Um, we don't know his name, of course, but this young boy, um, evidently, I'm just picturing, one day after breakfast, he, he goes out outside, and there's excitement in the air, and there's people walking by everywhere, and they're kind of running, and, and he says, what's going on? And they said, man, didn't you hear? Jesus is on a boat, and he's going up, you know, to, to pass up the lake, and he's going to be up farther, and we're going to see him. And he says, can I go? Can I go? And, and they says, yeah, come on, but along with us. So he runs in and asks his mom, can I go? Can I go? And she says, well, let me fix you a lunch. And we're told what was in his lunch. We don't know what his name was. We know what was in his lunch. Five little barley loaves. And when we talk loaves, you know, this isn't, you see some pictures of the feeding of the 5,000 where they got these big old loaves of bread like this long, you know, like you went to Walmart and bought a, you know, a French bread or something. But this was a little kid's lunch. I mean, these were little, five little tiny biscuits. The Bible says they were even barley biscuits, right? So they weren't the, the nice, fluffy, Bojangles kind of biscuits. You know, these were hard little biscuit rocks. And two little fish, two little sardines um, in his lunch. They were food for a poor boy. And he grabbed his little lunch and he ran up the road. It was a long ways to, to where... The crowd was gathering where Jesus was coming. They're again watching the boat as it's going up the place. And they came to the place where Jesus landed. And I imagine, being a little boy, he wiggled his way up to the front, you know, just kind of pushed it, getting until they can see what's going on. And he watched as Jesus healed people. Blind people that had never seen before in their entire life. And the first face that they ever see is the face of Jesus. What, a, what an experience that must have been, the rejoicing and the tears coming from those eyes. People who had never said a word mute from their birth, the first word they ever said was the name of Jesus. There were lame people. Some, I'm sure, had been born lame. Some who had probably had an accident and they'd fallen and crippled and their bones had not been set right. They couldn't walk. But the Bible says they were healed. Everyone who came with a disease or with a need was healed. And they walked off, not with canes, but leaping for joy. There were ulcers, cancers, infections, broken bodies, and broken spirits. There were discouraged people. And Jesus had time for them all. There were praises and thanks everywhere. And Jesus would tell them stories. Man, the kingdom of heaven is like this. Or the kingdom of heaven is like that. And the, the people were just soaking it in. And during the day... Andrew, that was Simon Peter's brother, the Bible tells us got acquainted with this little boy. And no doubt he said, hey, what, what's your name? And he told him, where are you from? What city are you from? Tell me about your family. How did you decide to come and, and be here today? And the little boy's holding his lunch. He says, hey, I brought, I brought lunch with me today. My mom made me bring it. And no doubt Andrew said, um, what did she send? Oh, I got five little biscuits here, and I got two little fish for, for lunch. But, you know, the time went by the whole day. And this kid, I don't know if you can imagine how exciting this church service must have been. The kid didn't eat his lunch. I don't know if, it, if any of you, when it comes lunchtime, you say, oh, man, it's time to eat. Let's go eat lunch. Um, so they're eager, and especially a kid. They'll never miss a meal. But he had not eaten his lunch. He had been so enthralled with watching what was happening that he had not even thought 
to eat. If others had brought their lunches, they were long gone. And I imagine it's about 5 p.m. The reason we know it's about 5 p.m. is because the sun goes down that time of year, it's spring, so it's the, the equinox. So it's about 6 o'clock at night when the sun goes down. The Bible tells us it was getting late in the evening. So I'm imagining 5, 5.30 in the evening, something like that, that Jesus is exhausted. The disciples are tired. Nobody's eaten all day long. Blood sugar is low. And verse 35 says, By this time it was late in the day. The sun's going down. And his disciples came to Jesus and said, This is really a remote place. There's no town here. Um, and it's already very late. Send the people away so they can go into the surrounding countryside villages and buy themselves something to eat. And Jesus answered them there in verse 37. You give them something to eat. Now that was an interesting um, challenge because they didn't have anything to eat themselves. And so they started talking among themselves, how are we going to furnish anything for them to eat? Um, Matthew records that Jesus said, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. John tells us that Jesus asked Philip, where shall we go and buy bread for these people to eat? And it's, the Bible tells us in parentheses that he asked this only to test Philip, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Jesus knew what he was going to do, but the disciples didn't know what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, eight months wages wouldn't buy enough bread for everyone to have a bite. So um, what he was saying is, let's imagine today if somebody's salary was $30,000, that would be about $24,000. And he says, man, if we had twenty four, twenty five thousand bucks, it wouldn't be enough to feed the, all these people. You can imagine there's 25,000 people there. It'd be a dollar a piece, right? You could go to Taco Bell and you could buy one item off of the value menu and that was all you could get. So, and, so send these people away. They said, even if we give them a dollar each, it's, you know, how are we to do that? And they didn't have a dollar each. They didn't have $25,000 to give to people. Remember when Jesus sent them out, he said, don't even take any money. Don't even take a bag. Don't even take a lunch. Don't take... They didn't have anything. They said, we don't have anything. But Jesus asked them, how many loaves, here we are, at, and here we are in verse 37. They said to him, it would take eight months of a man's wages. Are we going to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them? didn't even have that much, but hey, that's what it would take. And Jesus asked him a question, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And so um, the Bible tells us that, that this little boy, Andrew remembered the little boy. Andrew was probably sure that the lunch was long gone, but he went to that little boy and he asked, do you still have your lunch? Yeah, I still got it. Would you be willing to give it to Jesus? Now we're talking about food brings hunger on, right? So when you talk about potlucks and stuff, you say, hey, it's time to get eating potluck here. But talking about food, and the little boy probably said, oh, yeah, I do have a lunch. I should eat it. I'm, I'm really hungry. But he said, if Jesus wants it, I'll be happy to give it to him. Now, this little boy didn't know what Jesus was going to do with his lunch. He had no idea what was going to happen here. We know now from the story. But he didn't know. And he thought he was giving away his meal for the day. He's given away something that he would never be able to get um, back again. But I just want you to know, if you give something to Jesus, you never know what he's going to do with it. He might do something so incredible. And Andrew said, let's take your lunch to Jesus. And they bring it to Jesus. Andrew brings not just the lunch, but no doubt the little boy to Jesus. And it says there in verse 38, when they found out how much they had, they said, we have five biscuits and two little fish. John records it as Andrew saying, he spoke up and said, hey, there's a boy here with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far would they go among so many people? And Jesus said, have the people sit down. We're in verse 39 there. Jesus said, have the people sit down. They sat down in groups of 50, groups of 100 people, all over the hillside there by the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus opens that little boy's lunch, and he looks at it, and he smiles at the little boy. And the Bible says that um, he gave thanks. He took those five loaves, verse 41, and those two fish, and he looked up to heaven, and he gave thanks, 
and he began to break pieces off of those biscuits. I like to think that probably the first piece he broke, he gave it to Andrew, and that Andrew gave it to the little boy. Wouldn't that have been something to, to be there, to realize he's getting some of his lunch back? And as the little boy watched, Jesus just keeps breaking and breaking a piece off, and there wasn't any end of it. He could just break it off, and the disciples are holding their hands out, and, and they're full. And the next disciple comes up, and they're full, and they're sharing it with the people. And pretty soon, they said, we can't carry it in our hands. We need baskets. Does anybody have a basket? Did anybody bring anything that they're carrying things with? And they started putting the, the fish and the bread in baskets and distributing it out to all the people. And they just Jesus just kept breaking this little, out of five little pieces, it just kept going. It reminds me of that widow that had the oil, and she just kept pouring it into the vessels, and it just kept pouring and pouring, and never ran out. Or Elijah, that um, their meal never ran out, and the oil never ran out. And here Jesus is just breaking bread, and the people are eating, and the disciples are rushing back and forth. The Bible says that Jesus, after he'd given thanks, broke the loaves, and then he gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he also divided the two fish among them all. And not so you don't think that they, they each just got three molecules of a fish or anything. Verse 42 says that they all ate and were satisfied. They all got full. There wasn't anybody that went away hungry. It wasn't like, oh, we're just going to get, a, we're going to have to share this little bit. It was everybody had as much as they wanted. You know, when you come to Jesus, You'll never go away dissatisfied, unsatisfied. He can satisfy your needs no matter how, how pitiful your situation is, no matter what your health condition is, no matter what your mental condition is. If you come to Jesus, you'll never go away not satisfied. And Jesus said when it was all over, verse 43, the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of the bread and fish. They'd start off with five little pieces of bread, two fish, and now they've got 12 basketfuls of this. Um, one for as many as there were disciples. And they were for sharing with others. We're told the people took that food back to their homes, back to their families. I like to picture little, um, the little boy taking home more food than he had gone with. He went with five little biscuits and two fish, and now he's got uh, his lunch bag just totally full, and he takes it back to his home and shares with his family the food that Jesus had given. And you know, when Jesus blesses us and, and we have something that he's done for us, we need to go share it with other people. And that's what these people did, is they took that bread and they took that fish and they took it back home and said, you should see what Jesus did today. And it wasn't just the bread, and it wasn't the fish, but it was the changed lives. It was the, the people that had been healed, the people that had um, had their lives changed by coming to Jesus. So a couple points I just want us to, to learn, remember out of this story as you think about it. Is number one, if you're just a, a bystander, you came and you just say, yeah, I came just to see what was going on in the church. I just, you know, not even sure why I'm here. But you... If you come to Jesus, you won't be disappointed. He will not disappoint you. So um, come to him. The other thing that I want us to learn from the little boy, he didn't have much. Jesus said, give the people something to eat. They said, we don't have anything. Well, what do you have? Oh, we got five little things, little biscuits and two fish. Bring it here. Give it to me. What you give to Jesus may not seem like much. You may say, man, I don't have anything to, to give. I, you know, Maybe uh, I'm old, I can hardly get around anymore, or whatever. Give what you have, your time, your talents, your resources, whatever it is that you have, bring it to him, and he can multiply it far beyond what you can believe. We, again, we don't have any idea what happens as we do simple things for people. The impact of that as it ripples on through society and stuff, it can have huge impacts. And Bring Jesus whatever little bit you have and let him use it. He just says, come to me. Jesus will use it to, to bless others. And the other lesson is that Jesus used his disciples to distribute the blessings. Jesus didn't go around and hand the bread individually to every person, but he gave it to his disciples and they gave it to their friends, to their family, to their acquaintances, to the people who were seated out there. 
And God asks us to share with others what he has given to us. That he says, listen, if I've blessed you, don't keep that blessing to yourself. Share with others what it is that God has so generously given to you. Our closing song today, I guess, is going to be on the screen. In his glory I shall see the king. So let's do that song and then we'll have a benediction. <laughs>